Hello everyone and welcome to today's travel webcast webinar, Adventure Canada Expedition Cruising, exclusive destinations for the traveler who's seen it all. Brought to you by Adventure Canada and Baxter Media. Presenting for us today is Martin Aldrich, Business Development Manager and Expedition Guide. Hi Martin, how are you today? Doing very well, thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Absolutely, and we're happy to have you. So just before we get started, I'd like to let all the viewers know that if you have any questions during this webinar, just type them into the Q&A box, which is found in your Zoom toolbar, and those questions will be answered after the presentation has finished. Also, if you have any problems hearing Martin or seeing the presentation, just type a quick message into the chat box, and I'll do my best to assist you. Okay, Martin, if you'd like to go ahead and share your screen, you can start whenever you're ready. Excellent. I'm just going to start up the presentation here. Okay. There we go. Great. Excellent. So thank you very much for joining me today, everybody uh, from across the world. And uh, I'm excited to be presenting Adventure Canada's expeditions. Uh, we are uh, a leader in the expedition travel world. Uh, just recently voted for the second year running best adventure cruise line in the world. And I'm very happy to be uh, talking about what we do. Uh, my name is Martin Aldrich. I'm a business development manager. I'm also an expedition guide, so I work on board the ship uh, for at least a couple of the trips in the season. So I have in an intimate knowledge of all the different places that we go to, as well as the operation on board. Um, and I'm going to be your webinar guide for today. So we're going to uh, take a little journey to where Adventure Canada travels to. We'll be talking a little bit about the uh, company backgrounds, and then we'll uh, jump into the ship a little bit, and then we'll, we'll finish up with the itineraries. So Adventure Canada, where do we go? Uh, we go to the destinations that bring the true essence of expedition travel to life. So we're heading out into these places that are a little bit harder to reach, a little bit more uh, unknown in terms of uh, how often people are traveling there. Uh, so I really like this image. It gives you an idea of where most people live in North America. And what we do is we travel typically to the places that don't light up in the north, up in uh, Baffin Island, Greenland, Nunavut, we're getting to places that are uh, a little bit less traveled to. And of course, how do we get there? So we get there on board an expedition vessel. So we're going on the Ocean Endeavor. This is an ice class vessel. It takes up to 198 guests and we have 20 Zodiacs on board. So you can see a, an example of a Zodiac in the bottom left there. Uh, we can take 10 passengers on board with a, a, a resource staff and an expedition guide as well, um, which is great. You can have interpretation out on the land or out on the water as well. And why do we go? Of course, this is the big question. Well, why does anybody travel? We travel to explore. We want to see new places. We want to take to our guests to new places. We want to educate. We want to educate our guests about the places that they're visiting, about the culture, uh, about the history. Uh, and of course, we're looking for these beautiful places. So we're looking for the beautiful landscapes. We're looking to show you things that you wouldn't even imagine or have imagined before. So we're getting out to see some uh, icebergs here in Alulasat. And then, of course, we're always on the lookout for wildlife. So we're looking to see if we can find some polar bears when we're up in the Arctic, uh, whales, wherever we are. Uh, and uh, it's always great to be able to see uh, all the different kinds of wildlife that are, are in and around in these wild places. So Adventure Canada is a family owned and operated company. You can see uh, Matthew Swan there in the center uh, accepting his Lifetime Achievement Award for his contributions to tourism in uh, Labrador and Baffin Island, so specifically Nunavut. Uh, and then the company is now run by his three uh, kids, so Cedar, Alana and Matthew James. Uh, and you can see a few of the different awards that we've won over the years. Uh, I did already mention our Best Adventure Cruise Line for the second year running. Uh, we also were just uh, given an award by World Nomads for our solo traveler experience. And that is because we bring a very large number of solo travelers on board. That is due to mainly to our free single supplement. I'm going to get a little bit more into that. Uh, in a few minutes, but uh, the reason why uh, we won the award is because we have a 28% single traveler occupancy rate. So we have a very large number of single travelers on board our expeditions. So that family feeling of the, of the family run company 
really comes about on board. It, it translate over to the tra translate to over to the guest experience. So you're actually going to be able to meet all of our resource staff and our expedition guides. You're going to meet a lot of like minded travelers on board. And of course, as I talked about already, you're going to learn from these resource staff. So you're going to hear about Inuit culture from someone like IU Peters pictured on the left. Uh, you can make your own Inuit fish print with John Houston a renowned Inuit art culture uh, curator and you can do this all on board really though the experience is about getting off of the ship we want to try to get onto the land to go for hikes to get into communities uh, to really experience what it's like to be in these places so uh, you can see it's uh, an example of one of our teams in the bottom left there uh, we have 33 or 34 resource staff and expedition guides on every single expedition that we run on the ocean endeavor and that is a huge team that's two to three times the number of uh, resource staff and expedition guides than any, any other operator uh, in an expedition world uh, and we get into small groups so you can get into a group of 10 passengers you can see in the top left there uh, and you can even of course ask questions of the the, the uh, guides one-on-one -on -one. maybe you're walking around and you ask the botanist what's this plant that I'm seeing here um, on the ground uh, we have lots of different types of excursions that we offer uh, you can see an example of a passenger taking up the taking up the opportunity to uh, paint en plein air on board our northwest passage trip on the bottom right there so the three different types of excursions that we offer are included in the cost of the trip. So that's uh, an expedition cruise, community visits, and expedition landing. So when we're out on an, a Zodiac cruise, we're going to be in the Zodiacs for the duration of the excursion. You're out there for 45 minutes, sometimes up to two or two and a half hours, depending on how long uh, the different uh, itineraries are in, in terms of the different areas that we visit. And of course, depending on how long those polar bears will stick around for. We're always on the lookout and the Zodiac Cruise is a great way to get uh, up close and personal, <laughs> but not too close to some polar bears. Uh, when we uh, head into communities and we do our community visits, we'll have local guides. Um, so we don't just hire local staff for our resource staff on board of the ship. We actually also hire locals when we visit communities. So uh, this is a place called Kangamut. And when we were here last, uh, last summer, we had local guides take our passengers around in groups of about 15 or so and take you out around to all the different highlights of the community. And then we have cultural demonstrations when we're there. So you may see some uh, Inuit drum dancing, some throat singing. Uh, there's often the opportunity to try local country food. So you can try dried Arctic char, uh, bannock, uh, really trying to bring a full, well-rounded experience when you're in a community. What is it like to actually live in these places? So those are our community visits. And then expedition landing. So our, th our third type here of uh, included excursions will be expedition landings. This is where we're getting off the ship uh, to do multiple different options. So you could have a uh, slow meandering walk. You could join the, the, slow, the slow walker group. You could join the, the intense hiker group. Uh, and then we'll have a couple of different uh, fitness-based options in between that. And then we'll also cater to different interests. So we'll have our archaeologists set up at an archaeology site. Uh, we'll have have, uh, any type of interpretation will be covered and all of these different types of uh, options for the expedition landing will be outlined the day prior or the morning before uh, so that you know what the options are and you can choose the one that is appropriate for you or your clients can choose the one that's appropriate for them. Just as an example, uh, this is one of our expedition landings from two years ago. I, I really liked this location. Um, in Greenland as well. Uh, and so just to the top left here, we've got the Zodiac coming into the uh, side gate along the side of the ship. And then what we actually did is we went uh, over to the land, uh, you can see pictured on the top right, and then we hiked up to the top uh, and we got to uh, walk around this beautiful uh, reflective lake, uh, nice and calm, clear conditions and that was our ex expedition landing. So no community, uh, no community here. Uh, very few people live in this area. The only building is you can see in the top right is actually a little hunting um, outpost. Uh, really, really unique way to experience these remote places. Getting out onto the land, going for hike, uh, going for hikes. So for the different uh, expeditions on the Ocean Endeavor, we do have three inclusions. Every uh, guest will have uh, provided to them a an expedition jacket that is theirs to take home at the end of the trip and to use dur during the trip as well. It is a waterproof, windproof, uh, soft shell, uh, and it is very, they're very comfortable. 
our passengers are, have been very happy with them. Uh, lots of pockets uh, and uh, of course uh, it's waterproof which is important. When we're on Zodiacs you can get little splashes from time to time uh, depending on the weather conditions of course. And then you can see um, one of our passengers there taking a photograph with a Nikon camera and you can see the Nikon logo on the top right. We have a free camera share program on board. We have a Nikon ambassador that will be on each of our different trips and Nikon professional uh, photographers on each of our different trips as well. And they will show our guests how to use a variety of different cameras that uh, are on board and the passengers can rent for free uh, a variety of lenses or uh, perhaps a high-end digital SLR or a super zoom camera and they can use that for a day or two uh, for free and, and then uh, they can keep those images as well. So that's a really great free inclusion. We also have add-on activities that are at an additional cost. Really, it's the cost of renting the equipment. So we have uh, kayak excursions as, a, as an option in many of the different locations. Uh, we, you can rent mountain bikes on board and take those off and explore um, on your own. And then we're also uh, going to be running uh, snorkeling, a snorkeling program uh, for 2019 as well. So a really fantastic add-ons that you can put uh, to use on board your trip or for your client. And these, uh, the kayak program can be booked in advance. Uh, both the, the um, uh, sorry, both the kayaking and snorkeling can be booked in advance and the mountain bikes are rented on board uh, the day of. So a little bit more about the Ocean Endeavour. It is an ice class vessel. Uh, it is a class 1B. It was completely refurbished in 2015 and has done, had continuous updates each year since then. Uh, it's quite modern and nice. It was formerly a ferry. It's very comfortable. Uh, we're not selling a luxury vessel. This is an expedition cruise vessel. Um, the nice thing about the Ocean Endeavour is it's a little bit wider than most expedition ships, which means it's a little bit more stable. That also means there's a little bit more room for lounge areas. So a typical expedition ship is only going to have uh, one or maybe two lounges. We have three lounges and the Compass Club, which has a library uh, on board. So it, there are lots of spaces to hang out. You can see here uh, in the top left, our pool is pictured. We also have two saunas, which you can see, which you can see on the bottom right. One of them, an example of uh, plenty of deck space. Uh, there's a hot tub. There is a full spa. You can have a facial and a manicure or a hot stone uh, massage. Uh, we have daily yoga classes, sometimes twice daily. Uh, so there are really, uh, oh, and a full gym as well. So there are a lot of options uh, in terms of comfort on board the vessel. Uh, a little bit about the uh, inclusions as well. We have three meals a day included in the cost of the trip. We have breakfast and lunch, which are served buffet style with uh, many, many different options. And then an a la carte dinner. Uh, the a la carte dinner will have, um, um, as a main course, you'll have four options and they will be um, catering to all different uh, dietary needs. So we'll have a vegetarian option, a pasta option, a seafood option, and a meat option. Uh, any dietary need can be catered to except for kosher. Uh, and that is um, really great because we love to have uh, people try all the different food that uh, we can um, bring on board from all the different locations. Uh, we are, we launched a Taste of Place program in 2018, and we will be fully running the Taste of Place program in 2019. So a great way to experience local food and local delicacies. You can see the Compass Club pictured on the top right here, uh, and the Meridian Club on the bottom. That's The Meridian Club is on the top deck, and that is where our yoga classes uh, are uh, each morning. And this is also a great place uh, to hang out and take in the vistas, because it's on the top deck with beautiful panorama views. Looking a little bit at the cabins, uh, we have 10 different cabin categories, categories 1 through 10. Categories 3 through 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all have free single supplement cabins set aside. So that is uh, up to almost 50 cabins uh, that we have set aside for any single travelers. They don't have to pay a single supplement as long as we have those cabins available. They get a free single supplement. They don't have to share their cabin and they're not paying extra. It's a huge incentive. It's one of our biggest promotions. And and I would definitely, uh, if there's one takeaway message uh, from this, uh, we go to amazing places and we have free single supplements. Uh, you can see the hot tub pictured here on the left and then a couple of our passengers enjoying a barbecued lunch on the right. So we have a barbecued lunch on each of our different expeditions. It's a great way to hang out on deck, have a burger, maybe a, a beer or some wine and take in the beautiful view 
Uh, just so you know, all the photos that are, are, are shown are from our expeditions. These are not photoshopped. Uh, they are taken by the Nikon professionals and, and I've even snuck in some of my own photographs in here as well. So I, I already mentioned this, but the free single supplement, single, single travelers don't pay extra to be in their own cabin, again, in cabin categories three, four, five, six, and seven. We have multi-trip savings if your passenger is, if, you're, if your client is gonna book uh, more than one trip in a season, they are entitled to uh, promotions anywhere from uh, 10 to 20% off. And we also have a loyalty program. So anywhere from five to 10%, based on the number of past trips that you've already done with Adventure Canada. As soon as you've booked your first trip, your second trip will be at 5% off. And then when you get up to six trips, you're at 10% off. And that loyalty program, the percentage off is combinable with all of our other promotions, including the free single supplement. We're family friendly. We have no minimum age and no maximum age. Um, we, I've been on a trip where we had uh, a three and a half month year old with her, with her mother, obviously, and, and her father, uh, and, and, and an 87 year old as well. So we have a, a wide range, but the main demographic will be 55 to 75. They're typically well traveled. They're typically from North America. They're looking to do something a little different. They want to, want to get off the beaten track and get out to these far fun places that Adventure Canada gets to. We also have a price guarantee. That means if we lower the price, uh, on uh, a trip that your client is booked on, they're guaranteed that lower price. Pretty self-explanatory there. So diving into our different expeditions, what you see on the screen now is an overview of both our 2019 and 2020 seasons. Uh, just as a note, and I will cover this, I'm going to run through the different trips, but the European trips is how we will be starting our 2019 season. And the trips that are on the east coast of Canada are going to be the trips that begin our 2020 season. So not every trip is run every single year. They're typically only run once each per season. Um, and they run back to back in a series, which you'll see in a moment. But in 2019, as an example, we start with Ireland. Uh, the trip after that is Scotland slowly then Iceland, and then in the wake of the Vikings. So those trips each run once. You can see the set dates that are there, and they run back to back, uh, sometimes with just a repositioning uh, in between. So I'm going to jump into our European expeditions, and I'll cover our Canadian expeditions after that. Uh, just so you know, a great way for your clients to save uh, 15 to 20%. All of the European expeditions you can see on the screen here are currently all 15% off. If your client were to book two of these or more, they would receive 20% off of each of those expeditions. And that's up until April 15th, so a little over a month uh, here to be able to get those bookings in for Europe this coming summer. Ireland circumnavigation. This is the first trip of our 2019 season. It's a 12 day expedition. It starts and ends in Dublin and goes right the way around the Emerald Isle. A really great way to see any island, I believe, is to circumnavigate it. You're going to be going around uh, a place that has obviously water all the way around, but also typically uh, islands have a large number of settlements and villages and, and cities on the periphery. And a lot of the, these islands, their economy has often been based on fishing. And so there's a lot going on, a lot to see on the coastline. And it's a great way. You don't have to drive during the day. You're going to be repositioning on the ocean endeavor overnight and then we're off the ship for the day each day in the different locations you can see pictured here just a couple of the highlights uh, you can find all of our detailed itineraries on our website adventurecanada.com goes into a day-by-day -day, um, itinerary of what we're actually going to cover be mindful though that all of our expeditions are all quite fluid and flexible meaning that if weather conditions do arise we have backup plans we have a b c d e and sometimes f and if we have to we'll, we'll change our plan based on what we see as a predicted weather sometimes the sea conditions can force us to, to go to a different location, something a little bit more sheltered. So we do adapt and we try to offer the best trip possible based on what we're presented at the time. So always important to note that itineraries may change. Um, but a couple of the highlights here for Ireland circumnavigation, we've got uh, the Cliffs of Moher, really beautiful 700 foot high um, cliffs. Um, they're uh, located in County Clare. They're about 14 kilometers long and they receive about 1.5 million visitors a year. Very, very beautiful location um, and a great scenic location that you, we get to visit on Ireland circumnavigation. 
We'll be visiting the UNESCO site at the Giant's Causeway. This is where we find uh, 40,000 interlocking basalt columns uh, from 50 to 60 million years ago. They were formed from a, a volcanic eruption. And the, the eruption cooled into these hexagonal biscuit-shaped uh, columns that you can see pictured on your screen. The legend has it that uh, the giant Finn McCool was challenged by the Scottish giant uh, and Finn McCool built the causeway in order to reach his opponent from Ireland over to Scotland. I'm sure that's totally true. Uh, speaking of Scotland, this is our next expedition. This is 11 days, June 21st to July 1st, 2019. This will start in Glasgow and finish in Aberdeen. From Glasgow, we have a coach transfer to the coach, uh, coast, rather, uh, and we board the Ocean Endeavour in Greenock. We're then heading to the Inner and Outer Hebrides, uh, all the way out to the far-flung St Kilda. We go up to the Orkney Islands and the Shetlands before then finishing, once again, finishing in Aberdeen. Uh, we are going to stop into a, a few different locations um, for human, natural and human history. So you can see here what looks like Stonehenge. These are actually the standing stones of Stennis and the Ring of Brodgar. These are um, Neolithic monuments that were built um, about the same time as Stonehenge, so about 4,000 years ago. Uh, and you can go right up to these stones and take a picture uh, with them uh, and they won't bite, don't worry. Uh, really, really cool place, uh, very different. And very few people have actually heard of these uh, standing stones. We also, as I mentioned, go out to the, uh, the island of St. Kilda, the, the largest bird colony in the UK. The uh, birds here are numerous. There's over 2 million birds. We have in the picture here uh, some of the 50,000 breeding pairs of gannets that are on the, one of the islands here. There are uh, over 100,000 breeding pairs of puffins. There are auks. Uh, many different types of birds uh, at St. Kilda. It's a relatively remote place. It's hard to get to, and we do actually visit the archaeology site at uh, the village of St. Kilda as well. Of course, no trip around Scotland would be complete if we didn't uh, stop into at least one distillery, so there are options in, in uh, numerous locations to uh, stop in and have a wee drama of scotch. Uh, if you do not like to have any scotch, you can also uh, take us up on the offer to hike up to the viewpoint overlooking uh, the Lagavulin distillery in particular, and there will always be an included excursion that you can partake in if you do not wish to go into the scotch distilleries. Uh, the next trip, the third trip of our 2019 season, is Iceland circumnavigation. This one goes right the way around from Reykjavik to Reykjavik, starting and ending there. Um, this is 11, oh, sorry, 10 days. Uh, and this uh, trip is, of course, exploring the land of fire and ice. We're going to be seeing mountains and volcanoes and waterfalls. Uh, so we'll be getting up into the north uh, and visiting Godafoss. Uh, we'll be going to uh, Lake Myvatn. You can go into the uh, hot springs there. This is uh, the less touristed Blue Lagoon. So the Blue Lagoon, full of people, um, expensive. We go up to Lake Myvatn, much more peaceful. You can see this is about as busy as it gets there. Uh, and it's really a great way to soak the bones. Uh, after those uh, short and long hikes that you've been experiencing so far. Up in the north, uh, we'll be, be visiting Husavik and Grimsey, uh, and this is an ideal place uh, in terms of the nutrients in the water. There are a large number of migrating species of whales in this area, up to 15 different species, including the blue whale, uh, the largest uh, mammal in the water largest mammal on earth. Um, so a great way to experience um, getting up close and personal to these uh, large pelagic animals, 15 different species of whales. Uh, going from Iceland to Greenland, we have a trip called In the Wake of the Vikings. This will start in Reykjavik. We'll head out to the Westman Islands. We do have a day repositioning over to eastern Greenland before we uh, go right the, through Prince Christian Sound, a very unique fjord that you can go right the way through. And then we'll head up the western coast of Greenland. Uh, I did say there's a repositioning day, but it is intentional. On the eastern coast of Greenland, we have um, a collection of sea ice, as you can see pictured on the right there. Um, and whenever you have sea ice, you will have uh, typically lots of different animals. So you have uh, a bearded seal here pictured. Um, there's lots of different seals that will hang out on the ice. Whenever you have seals on the ice, you have polar bears hunting them. You have walrus that may be hanging out on the, the sea ice as well. And all those different 15 
different species of whales that I mentioned before. Say whales, minke whales, humpback, orcas, blue whales are all in this area as well. Very nutrient rich at this time of the year in and around the Arctic Circle. I mentioned the name in the wake of the Vikings. In the wake of the Vikings is based on uh, the, the way that the Vikings explored going from uh, Vinland uh, over to, um, or sorry, uh, from um, Scandinavia over to Vinland. Vinland is what they called Canada. And we'll be visiting a few of the different locations that they settled. So you can see pictured here, uh, Bratelid, uh, which is uh, just outside of present day Kassiarsuk. And this is uh, where they recreated Eric the Red's uh, small settlement back from 985, so over a thousand years ago, he was settling there. Uh, and we do visit a number of uh, more modern day communities, um, including the capital of Greenland, Nuuk. Uh, and then here's a different angle of a, a place I already mentioned, Kangamute, a great place to, to explore a small fishing community. Okay, jumping into uh, the Canadian and Greenland expeditions, uh, you can see again here just a little bit uh, larger, highlighted all of our different expeditions that we run in the Canadian Arctic, as well as uh, our trips that start the 2020 season on the East Coast. I'm going to run through our main Arctic expeditions first. I'll cover a little bit of what we see in the Arctic, and then I'm going to briefly cover uh, the East Coast trips offered by Adventure Canada. So jumping in, Higher Arctic Explorer, this is a 12-day expedition. I consider this a mini Northwest Passage trip. So you're getting the highlights of Western Greenland and the highlights of the beginning of the Northwest Passage in Lancaster Sound. Um, this is a, a great way if you only have two weeks, it's a great way to be able to get up to the High Arctic to be able to explore some of these uh, beautiful areas. Um, We'll have a community visit in Pond Inlet. We go to the largest uninhabited island called Devon Island. Um, the very first photo that I showed uh, right off the bat, a very colorful community with ice in the fjord is a place called Umanak. And that's Umanak Fjord pictured over in Greenland. They have a community visit there. Uh, Alulaset. Alulaset is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that I'm going to touch on in a few minutes. One of the fastest moving glaciers in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, really, really awe-inspiring place. And this finishes uh, in Kangaroo Swac. You'll notice two dates in 2020. This trip will run in both directions from Kangaroo Swac, Greenland to Resolute, Canada, and in the reverse, Resolute to Kangaroo Swac, uh, August 11th, 22nd in 2020. So a great way to see the high Arctic uh, for a shorter trip. If you're looking for a longer duration expedition, we have our 17 day into the Northwest Passage trip. This is going to be starting in Kangaroo Swac, Greenland, covering more of Baffin Islands before going into the main part of the Northwest Passage and finishing in Kugluktuk, Nunavut. Uh, I apologize if you can hear the, um, the chipper in the background. I did not know that they were the, the city was going to be chipping trees today. I'm apologizing if that's uh, uh, causing any issues with sound. Hopefully I'm being loud enough. Um, this trip here is going to be more of a legend, more of the legendary Northwest Passage route. So we're, we're covering an extra five days from around Resolute over to Kugluktuk. This is really the area around Victoria Island and the Queen Maud Gulf um, and Clintock Channel that really challenged those explorers that many of them faced and got blocked or or even actually many of them perished in this area. So we do go to historic sites here on into the Northwest Passage uh, in this area around Victoria Island. Um, so the big difference here on into the Northwest Passage compared to the next trip I'm gonna show you is covering a little bit more of Baffin Island. Out of the Northwest Passage is our next expedition. This goes from Kugluktuk to Kangaroo Swack, so heading eastward. This is 17 days as well, and it's gonna cover a very similar area in the first five days and then we start to do have a little bit of a different itinerary. We're going to head further north. We'll go up into Iowitak or Greece Fjord, which is Canada's northernmost community, about 130 people living in uh, at about 77 degrees north. We may head up as far north as 80 degrees in Smith Sound here, might even get up to Pym Island, a small island at 80 degrees north. And what you're seeing on this map as well, just wanted to touch on the fact that there's about six dots on here. We're getting off the ship every day. The only time we may not get off the ship is if we're crossing a larger body of water, as I mentioned um, in our Iceland to Greenland trip. That would be a day at sea. We're going to have full programming on board during those, during those days. But in this case, on either the Northwest Passage, we're skirting along in the archipelago of Nunavut, along Ellesmere Island and Greenland for the entire duration. We should be off the ship every day hopefully, weather permitting, of course. 
Uh, we'll be going into a Lula set that I already mentioned, and this is a great transition over into a Lula set. So this is what, again one of the fastest moving glaciers in the northern hemisphere. 590 billion tons of ice comes out of uh, a Lula set every year. Uh, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and we'll do a double day here. We'll have a Zodiac cruise. You can see some passengers in the Zodiac here going by one of the fishing vessels. And we get to go up right close to the icebergs there. And whenever there's ice, we always have wildlife. So you can see here from our, uh, high, uh, from our uh, Northwest Passage trip last year, we have our host, David Newland, very stoked about seeing a humpback whale uh, showing its tail while it's feeding right up against the ice here in the Lulisat. Here's the shot that I mentioned before. This is Umanak, heart-shaped mountain in the background. Umanak means heart-shaped rock and some of the small little bergy bits in the, in the foreground. Bergy bits are little bits of iceberg that have broken up. Uh, we get to walk in and around this community. Uh, you can go right up to the viewpoint. You can get some perspective on the size of the iceberg. So you can see the 137 meter long ocean endeavor there. And in the background, an even larger iceberg with 80% of its mass underneath the water there. And here you go, a little zoom in to see the ocean endeavor and one of those small little icebergs in the background. We see all different kinds of sea ice. Uh, it is, as I mentioned, a great place to see wildlife. Uh, we have uh, in the Northwest Passage every year, it freezes up and as it starts to melt, you see the sea ice starting to break up and, you can, and, and we can navigate through this in the ocean endeavor as it is an ice class vessel. So this is the single year ice that you can see. Lots of different uh, species of sa seals would be on here. As I mentioned, we have uh, uh, polar bears hunting those seals, of course. We have multi-year ice as well. So multi-year ice is, is quite uh, gnarly and we weather worn because it's been around for more than just one winter. It was formed previous, uh, previous, winters, uh, previous winters before uh, we're visiting there. And then you can see uh, how it's been thrown around and weathered and worn. And of course, I did already say, we get to see polar bears when we have those uh, pieces of ice. You often have the polar bears either on them or hunting. Uh, you can see a mom here. What you can't see very easily are the two little polar bear cubs that she's got with her um, sitting and, um, and nursing from her, their, her, their mother there. Sometimes we do actually get to see polar bears hunting. This is uh, a mom and, and two larger cubs, two and a half year old cubs that had uh, a fresh seal catch that we, uh, this is just outside of Pond Inlet in Nunavut. Sometimes we're actually able to be quite close to the uh, polar bears. Sometimes they'll actually come along the ice and get even closer to us. Uh, they, they, uh, we don't approach the wildlife. We will be respectful. It is their territory. But sometimes the polar bears are quite curious about us and they'll actually head a little closer. Um, so you can see all the passengers out on deck on the top photo and uh, a couple of the uh, a mom and her cub uh, pictured in uh, below there. So we will head into some fjord systems. Often uh, we'll see some bird colonies in these areas, very dramatic formations of rock. We go to historic sites as well. So you can head to um, Fort Ross here, which is uh, pictured, and you can go to the last built Hudson's Bay Company training post. It's a really, really cool historic building. Uh, you can see the manager's building pictured in the background. You get to explore both of these uh, buildings. Lots of history. You can see all the uh, graffiti in the inside of the Hudson's Bay Company training post here from all the, the visitors that have uh, been there for many, many years. We don't sign the, the, the wall ourselves, but many of the different expeditions that have come through for the last uh, 100, and so, 100 or so years have, have uh, drawn pictures of their ships or left little messages inside and you can read them. And I know this because uh, I've been there myself. That's me and my wife pictured there uh, last summer up in Fort Ross in Nunavut. It's just, it's, uh, it's just uh, on the, um, uh, the very top of continental North America. So another historic site that we go to is a place called Beachy Island. You may have seen that on the maps that I was showing. A Beachy Island is renowned as being the last known uh, place that um, the Franklin expedition, Sir John Franklin, the English explorer, uh, was known to have been. And they know that because they found three graves of three of his sailors that perished. There were many subsequent expeditions that went out looking for um, the Franklin expeditions, his two ships, the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus. And one of the, the graves that you can see here is from one of those uh, one of the sailors that perished on a subsequent rescue mission. Uh, both of those ships have now been since found in 2016 and 17 uh, and we do actually uh, we are actually able to go close to the HMS Erebus as well. 
And this is one of my favorite shots here, uh, showing a place in Greenland called Etta. Uh, we do about a 45 minute transfer in. Uh, we're getting, uh, we're going for about a 45 minute walk over even terrain. Um, and then there is the option to do a more strenuous, less even terrain hike, as you can see the passengers here hiking around the glacier uh, fed lake. Uh, two really big highlights in Etta up here. We get to see muskox pretty much every single time we've been there and uh, Arctic hare. So the white Arctic hare are here as well and I've seen them every time that I've been there. At the very end of uh, Out of the Northwest Passage, mid-September and the beginning of our Greenland and Wild Labrador trip, right in the middle around mid-September is a great opportunity opportunity, excuse me, to see the northern lights. They dance around uh, beautiful colors. Uh, a pretty, very good chance in that time, mid-September, again, at the end of Out of the Northwest Passage or beginning of Greenland and Wild Labrador to see the northern lights. Earlier in the season, it is too bright. We have 24 hours of sunlight. You can't see the Northern Lights. So really mid-September is the best time. Jumping on to more of our East Coast trips, this is Greenland and Wild Labrador. This is a 15-day expedition. It starts in Greenland and heads right the way down the coast of Greenland, down the coast of Labrador and Newfoundland. Something I haven't touched on yet, we have chartered flights. So for our passengers, and I'm just gonna use this trip as an example, um, it is expensive to fly to Kangaroo Sox. We charter a vessel, we charter a plane, I should say, uh, and we fly our passengers from Toronto to Kangaroo Swack, and then you finish in St. John's on this trip. And there are many commercially available flights out of St. John's. Um, for our trips in the high Arctic, we have charter flights in both directions, and they go from either Calgary, Ottawa, or Toronto, depending on where we are flying to. Again, all of that information can be found on our website in the detailed itinerary for each of the different trips. So here's the, one of the highlights for sure in our uh, Greenland and Wild Labrador expedition. This is a, a shot of the Torn Gap Mountains. We have three different days spent in different locations in the Torn Gap Mountains, one of Canada's newest national parks. Really, really spectacular. An unexpected place on Canada's east coast, the fjord systems of Labrador. A trip that's focused on Inuit art and culture, Heart of the Arctic, will be in 2020. So this isn't running uh, this coming season, 2019. It will be uh, mid-July uh, till late July in 2020. And as I mentioned, it's Inuit culture and art focused. This means that we're going to be stopping into more communities in Southern Baffin Island that are renowned for Inuit art. It's a great way to support the communities. You can find fantastic uh, uh, Inuit prints, you can try, uh, you can find Inuit sculptures, uh, and you can meet local Inuit in their, in their community. It's a really, really great place, uh, a really great trip to, to visit into these communities. And on top of that, we also have really great wildlife viewing. The, um, the, some of the photos that I just showed of the polar bears uh, were just uh, taken on our last uh, itinerary that we when we last ran this itinerary in 2017 heart of the arctic really really fantastic expedition uh, one of our expeditions um, that won our 50 tours of a lifetime award is mighty saint lawrence so this is the beginning of our 2020 season the first trip this uh, heads out of the um saint lawrence uh, out into the the gulf of saint lawrence and we will be visiting uh, the gaspe region going into forion national park we'll go to bonaventure island and see the uh, gannett colony there uh, you can see pictured in the bottom right Per Se Rock, which is just around the corner from Bonaventure Island. We go stop into PEI and visit Summerside. We go up to the Magdalen Islands, a great place to go for a mountain bike. And then we head to France and we finish in France in St. Pierre and Miquelon. So a great time to touch on all of these expeditions I've showed you so far. All are going international. So they're either stopping into Greenland, they are over in Europe, or they're going to St. Pierre and Miquelon. That means that your clients would need a passport. It also means that the cost of the expedition um, does not have tax on it. You'll also notice on our website that all of our expeditions are listed in USD. But we also can offer our Canadian clients Canadian pricing in-house and it's um, good, uh, a very good exchange rate in-house. Atlantic Canada Explorer runs from June 15th to 27th, so it runs back to back with the mighty St. Lawrence. This goes from France, from St. Pierre and Miquelon to uh, Cape Breton, we go then in and around to the Bay of Fundy. We're stopping into a, a few different places in Nova Scotia uh, before heading out to Sable Island. So you can see the wild horses pictured on the bottom left from Sable Island. And Sable Island is, will be actually be spending two different days there to visit uh, those wild horses. Over 400 wild horses roam Sable Island. And we also have the largest um, 
gray seal colony here on Sable Island, which we will uh, be able to see at least a few of those gray, uh, gray seals. Following this uh, expedition, we have Newfoundland circumnavigation. This goes from St. John's to St. John's. That will be the third expedition in 2020, uh, thir third in the, in, the, in the beginning of the season. And it will be the last trip of our 2019 season. So again, this starts and ends in St. John's. We go to three UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, Lanso Meadows, the only confirmed Viking settlement in North America. We go to the Basque Whaling Port in Red Bay over in Labrador. You can see in the top left there, uh, or top, uh, top of your screen. We go to the UNESCO site at Gross Morne National Park and we visit the Tablelands. Really, really cool spot. This also goes to St. Pierre and Miquelon, so it is going to have that, uh, your, that uh, international destination and no tax as I mentioned great way to see France without crossing the Atlantic so just a few little things to touch on here we have um, mandatory emergency evacuation insurance which is required for all of our uh, guests on board they need to be covered for $75,000 worth of emergency evacuation and that is pretty standard in most medical plans but it's always important to know that we do require that insurance coverage we send out pre-departure packages once clients are booked. We have pre and post hotels for all of these expeditions I've just talked about at preferred rates. I mentioned chartered flights. So we have chartered flights for anywhere that is difficult or and or expensive to get to. We offer chartered flights at cost. They're not commissionable, but they are at cost. It's a great way to be able to know that from the pre-hotel to the post hotel, your client is gonna be taken care of when you book into our pre and post hotels and take the chartered flights. Everything's taken care of from hotel to hotel. We also offer pre and post tours. So if your clients are looking to add on in Iceland to do something a little different, if they want to add something in Newfoundland like Fogo Island, or they want to do um, any kind of pre-tour that you might think of, we offer a number of great options for all of our different expeditions. Those can also be found on our website, or you can always call us at our 1-800 number as well. We have incentives for groups. If you're looking to run a group in 2020 or 2019 or 21, uh, we have incentives depending on the size of the group. And you can see that here for uh, groups of six, 10 and 20. You can see the different uh, incentives that we offer. And then we're, we're running, we're almost finished our 2019 uh, agent contests where we're giving away a Northwest Passage trip for two. However, we are going to be running another incentive soon for any trip, uh, for any passengers that are booked on our 2019 season. There'll be a, a visa incentive coming up and that'll be launched uh, early April. Uh, and then we'll launch our new uh, agent contest for 2020 in the summer season here. Uh, so you can sign up for that on our website as well. And then you're probably reading across the bottom and it might be part of why you're here. We have a jacket giveaway uh, today for one lucky person attending today's webinar. Um, we're going to be drawing that name afterwards. So fingers crossed, hold your breath. Uh, well, not for too long, but well, you might be the winner of one of our Adventure Canada expedition jackets. Just wanted to touch on once again our European sale, 15 to 20% off until mid-April. That's one more month. Uh, something I didn't mention, all of our 2020 expeditions are on, currently on early booking uh, savings of 15%. And that's valid all the way until October 31st. So if you have a client who might be interested in heading to the Arctic or maybe the East Coast for 2020 or perhaps heart of the Arctic in 2020, they're on sale 15% off the birth cost all the way up until October 31st. Um, looks like we're right about the, the 40 or so minute mark here. I'm gonna jump over to the last slide, which is a video, a promotional video for our Northwest Passage Expedition. We have many more videos on the YouTube that you can check out. Uh, this is just over a minute, so please stay tuned. And here is our Northwest Passage. This is out of the Northwest Passage 2016. Thank you. 
Oh, I get blown away every time I see that. Um, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I can see there are a number of different questions and I'm gonna get to those uh, very shortly here, but I really appreciate you taking the time to listen in on Adventure Canada's webinar. We do explore incredible places uh, and we do it in comfort on board the Ocean Endeavor. So thanks again for joining me here. Um, I'm just gonna jump into the questions that I can see here. So looking at the pictures, these trips would not be suitable for people with mobility issues. We are not wheelchair accessible. However, it depends on the different trip. We do offer many different uh, levels of intensity for our different excursions. Uh, we've had on board this last summer, we had someone with a walker on board High Arctic Explorer. She got off uh, as much as she could and she explored as much as she could. We do offer many different uh, levels of intensity so you can do a, a shorter, softer walk. You don't have to do the intense walk, but we're not looking at, um, in lots of locations, they're not necessarily paths or paved uh, walkways. So yeah, certainly someone with a severe mobility issue, this may not be the best uh, option for them. But again, it also depends on the destination. Uh, next question from Jimmy. Is there any St. Lawrence River Sailing 2019? No, we are not offering in 2019. We'll be having uh, our next expedition to St. Lawrence in 2020 in June. Are you a Canadian company? Yes, we're a Canadian company. If so, why? So I call, covered the costs. Our, our costs are listed in USD, and we also do offer in house exchange rates for Canadian pricing. If we listed the prices in Canadian dollars, they would be uh, essentially converted from our USD cost to a Canadian price. So uh, it's mainly due to the fact that our costs are all in US dollars for the cost of uh, for our company but we also offer that great incentive of having a Canadian price that your clients can book through us uh, in our, in our, in our in-house office here. Uh, also on board, uh, perhaps what currency is generally used. So on the land, the currency would be the currency of the location, uh, whether it is euros in St. Pierre Miquelon, Canadian dollars in Canada, uh, Danish uh, kroner in, um, in Greenland, et cetera, et cetera. It, it does depend on where we are on board. Um, the ship's currency is USD. Anything you're buying from Adventure Canada on board would be a CAD. So any of the excursions, uh, anything from our gift shop, and from the spa is in CAD. Uh, if you are interested in the group incentives that I showed, uh, you can email me and I can provide that with you or to you, martin at adventurecanada.com, M-A-R-T-I-N at adventurecanada.com. Uh, I'll type that in here as well. Uh, and then could you please explain gratuities for these expedition trips? Okay, so gratuities would be play, uh, paid on board. Um, and that would be suggested at $15 USD per day. That is paid to the ship's crew. It's not paid to Adventure Canada. So we're, we don't take tips for Adventure Canada resource staff and expedition guides. That would be for the crew on the ship. I didn't mention this, but there's 100 crew on the ship on top of the 33 or 34 Adventure Canada staff. So you're really well taken care of. Uh, and that is what those gratuities would be for. The registry of the ship. The ship is a Polish ship registered to the Bahamas. We charter it through an American company and we're a Canadian company just to make things really fun and interesting. Uh, if we could charter an expedition vessel from a Canadian company, we would, but there are no suitable expedition vessels available from a, a Canadian charter company. Is alcohol included? It is not included. Um, there, are, there will be a, an included alcoholic beverage at the captain's welcome and the captain's farewell. As well, every guest will be hosted at a, at a table for a dinner and uh, wine will be compliments of Adventure Canada for that, uh, for that meal, for that hosted dinner. But alcohol is um, not provided. It's not included in the cost of the trip. Uh, we generally find people are off the ship and very busy. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, you're not going like, a, it's not like an all inclusive where you're, you know, you're spending a lot of time hanging around the pool. These are busy trips. We have a lot that we uh, try to fit in. So um, we find that not everybody really wants um, 
to have alcohol included because it does, of course, inc increase the cost of the trip. I think that covers most of the different, uh, the different questions there. If you do have any other questions that uh, I haven't answered or you think of afterwards, feel free to email me again. It's martin at adventurecanada.com. Uh, take a look at our website, sign up for our agent contest. Uh, we have lots of great incentives uh, for your clients. And again, I really appreciate you guys joining us today. Thank you so much, Martin. And there's this one uh, comment that was submitted to the chat box that I can actually, this is a question that I can't answer. Um, I missed the beginning of your presentation. Will it be recorded? Uh, yes, Norman, it's definitely recorded. Um, and I will be uploading the recording of this webinar to the Baxter Media YouTube channel uh, either later today or tomorrow morning. So definitely, um, definitely at the very latest before lunchtime tomorrow, the recording of this will be available on YouTube. So if you just go on YouTube and search for Baxter Media, uh, you'll come across our YouTube channel with our blue and white logo, kind of a, a, or a blue logo with a white background. And so that's where you can access all of our recordings. And um, I can even make a note of your name here, just so that I can send you the recording directly. That way you won't have to look it up. I can just send it right to you. Okay, Excellent. great. And as Mart and yeah, and as Martin mentioned, um, you can always uh, re reach out to him or to me uh, later on if you have questions about uh, about the webinar or about Adventure Canada or about Baxter Media. So, Martin, thank you so much for your fantastic presentation today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, and I appreciate the the support from Baxter Media as well. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, thanks, Martin. Take care, everyone. Take care.